welcome to my channel my name is Amber and today for my first ever YouTube video I'm going to be doing a short tutorial on how to make some Pinterest style clay pots. It's going to be super quick and easy and it's going to be the perfect skill to pick out whilst we're in lockdown. So here's a few things that you're going to need. So the first step is to get your clay out and you're going to want to knead it until it's soft and malleable. Once your clay feels easy to manipulate, you should grab your rolling pin and roll it until it's 1 to 2cm thick. Then you're going to want to grab your pot and I usually cover it in newspaper just so that it doesn't stick. Now that your pot is prepared, you can go ahead and place it on the rolled out clay. This step allows you to see how much excess clay you need to cut off and is also the best way to check that the clay is long enough to stretch around the perimeter of the pot. Now it's time to score and slip the clay. Now you're probably wondering, what the hell is scoring and slipping? Well you do this step when working with clay to allow the clay to stick together. Scoring is the crisscross incisions you score onto the clay itself. Slip is the water you add on top of that, which creates the ceramics version of superglue. Then I take one of my scraping tools and scrape the clay until it blends seamlessly. This might take some time, but we'll make sure your pot looks really smooth. Then I just rub in some water using my hands to smooth it over once more. Then I'm going to roll out some more clay which will be the base of the pot so this needs to be a lot smaller and if you can try and roll it will be more circular. Measure it against the main body of the pot for size and then slip and score once more. Then you should apply some light pressure at both of the pieces to seal them together grabbing the scraping tool, I scrape the clay to create a smooth surface. So now you've got the structure of your pot, you're going to want to add details. So you can add things onto the pot, you can score things in, whatever you want to do. After looking on Pinterest for inspiration, I found a lot of pots with faces on, so I played on this idea by using the eyeballs. These were just from Amazon and they were dead cheap, so I'd definitely recommend. Then I just played around with the positioning of the eyeball until it was perfect and applied some pressure to where I wanted it so that it would create a dent. I then went over this marking with another tool just so that it was deeper and I could get the eyeball a stick. I then cut out some eyelids and stuck those on as well. You can then just use your fingers or some clay tools just to smooth it out. As well as this, I'll also use some water. Now as you can see, I came back to the clay a few days later. And to keep the clay nice and soft, I always wrap it in plastic carrier bags and this will just keep the moisture so that it's still malleable. Once I've unwrapped the clay, I'll carry on until I'm happy with it, adding any final touches.
I don't know about you, but I have a huge obsession with mushrooms at the minute. I think they're so aesthetically pleasing and I've seen them all over Pinterest. So to make these mushrooms, I'll design them onto the chopping board and then add them onto the clay pot using slip. You don't always need to buy specific stamps to create patterns in your clay. Here, I used a grip as a tool to create the cool texture, but you can use anything you have at home. Now I've definitely seen this abstract face pattern all over and it's really easy to replicate. You'll have to make some long coils, some can call sausages, to make the line work of the face. I then place it on the pot, check where I like it, and then slip and scorp. Here is the finished result, I'm super happy with it. So once you've completed the pot, you're going to want to leave it for two to three days to dry. To speed up the drying process, I often put some newspaper under the pot and it'll just soak up any excess water. You'll know it'll be dry and when it turns a paler colour. So here I made an ashtray using a similar technique and this is the pale colour that I'm talking about. Now your pot's complete and totally dry, you can begin to add some colour to it. Let me know if you'd like to see a tutorial on how I made this ashtray. But the first stage of painting and decorating is using a pencil to outline any intricate designs you might want. Then I grab my acrylic paints, mixing a few different colours together to get the desired shade. Then I began painting. I tend to use the darker and deeper shades first and then go on to the white so that the white is nice and pigmented. Here I mixed a big dollop of white paint and then a little bit of red to create this gorgeous pink colour. I applied this all over the pot, avoiding the mushrooms, and then I let it dry for about a day. And here are the results. So I hope you learned something today and enjoyed watching the video. If you did, please like, comment and subscribe. Bye!